But let's take some time now to, once again, uh, with full intentionality, es establish ourselves in a posture that embodies wakefulness and dignity and safety wherever you are, however you find yourself, whatever your <clears throat> circumstances are at this moment. And giving yourself over to experiencing the body sitting here breathing. And just resting in an awareness of the breath coming into the body and the breath leaving the body and befriending the silence that is here, whether I'm talking or not, the silence in between and underneath my words and the, the vast silence in, in your own being the stillness that we were pointing to yesterday when we spoke about the um, thoughts and uh, emotions being like waves on the surface of the ocean and that they can be very turbulent and agitated and extremely powerful at times. And yet if we drop down below the surface, there's a uh, gentle undulations and stillness. And that's as true for our awareness, if not much more true than it is for the ocean. And so even in the midst of the full catastrophe of the human condition, and we certainly are, we can, in taking our seats, really take a stand in relationship to whatever's going on and the turbulence and the challenges of it, it all and find a kind of domain of strength and clarity and stability and calm. Not as an escape from anything, but as a, a resource for not only enduring, but as best we can, facing every single one of the challenges big and small that are on the horizon for us and that are in our faces right now. And so resting in this silent wakefulness that for now is focused as we did yesterday on a sense of the body as a whole sitting here breathing and riding on the waves of the sensations moment by moment by moment, and breath by breath by breath. Again, eyes open is fine. Eyes closed is also fine. Whatever you find most uh, congenial to stabilizing your attention.
And again, for those of you who are fairly new to the practice, just a reminder that uh, <clears throat> the mind has a life of its own and it's not necessarily going to stay focused in some kind of invariant way on the breath in the body. But sooner or later, it will be drawn here and there and everywhere, especially in the midst of strong emotion. And um, the instruction is, is very, very important and illuminating. It's not that this is a problem when the mind is, uh, has left the object of your attention and gone off someplace else. It's that our minds are expanding the curriculum of what needs to be embraced. So noticing what's on your mind when you notice that it's no longer on the breath in the body just noticing what is on your mind and the emotional valence of it and how strong it is and, and whether whatever it is is appearing in the body as tension or as contraction or as uh, energy of one kind or another and where is it located? And that can all happen within a few instants to just recognize where the mind is and how it is manifesting in the body. And then just let it be and come back to the breath sensations and featuring them once again, center stage in the field of awareness. And then just like exercising a muscle might involve many, many reps, this will go on endlessly. And each time with a huge amount of patience and forbearance, you just notice what's on your mind, feel the effects that it might be having in the body, whatever they are, and then for now, just simply reestablishing yourself primarily with awareness of the body sitting here in a dignified, erect posture or lying down or whatever posture you're adopting and breathing. So and this is important because it's not about the breath. We're simply using the breath to anchor and train our capacity to attend as a vehicle for something much bigger, which is to actually trust that our awareness is already holding everything and making it available to us in ways that are truly liberating, truly transformative truly giving us new degrees of freedom for being in relationship to very, very difficult, challenging, and unwanted stuff. So inhabiting the space of awareness, moment by moment by moment, and at the same time, using the primacy of the breath sensations and the sense of the body as a whole to anchor us in this vast dimensionality of human awareness that's already ours, so we don't have to acquire it. We just have to keep access to it as open as possible. So just this moment, just this breath coming in, just this breath leaving the body, just this resting. In this timeless moment we call now, in full awareness. And just for now, letting go of the future including even the next moment <clears throat> and letting go of the past and everything that's come before. And taking up residency here as if your very life depended on it. And you wouldn't be tuning into this program unless in some deep way, maybe merely intuitive, but nevertheless, some very deep way, you already knew that 
our lives do depend on it, or we've got better things to do at this hour. And we don't. So awareness and stillness then become completely synonymous with wakefulness, with mindfulness. And for the open-hearted quality of awareness that we sometimes call, that I sometimes call heartfulness. It's all right here. In this silence, in this in-breath, in this out-breath. So where is your mind right in this moment? How is it in the body right in this moment? The invitation is not to think, but to feel your way into it, to take a look, to come to your senses, all of them of which there are far more than five. And awareness is absolutely critical for all of them to function with greatest ef effectiveness and efficiency. How is it in the heart? How is it in the mind? How is it in the body? Right in this moment and knowing it not merely through thought, but non-conceptually through the embracing of this moment in awareness. And just for fun, in the <clears throat> remaining minutes of this uh, guided meditation, seeing if you can uh, expand the field of your awareness around the body sitting here breathing, and just let it be as big as it wants to be, so that it can include sounds, for instance. It can, can include thoughts any emotions, any turbulence in the um, emotional realm. 
anything at all. And simply rest in this boundless spaciousness of awareness that knows no circumference or perimeter and knows no center. And be this knowing that your awareness already is and always has been. And that includes, of course, not knowing and knowing that you really don't know. And that that's not just okay, but that is so much more in alignment with the truth of and the actuality of things. So we can simply rest in awareness and let whatever unfolds unfold as if our awareness, sometimes the image is used, of, it's like the sky. And I think I might've mentioned this yesterday that Storms can arise and weather patterns in the, in the space of the sky, of the atmosphere. Turbulence, calmness, light, darkness, rain, snow, and in the mind also, again, depending on conditions in the world. And we're seeing them in spades in this pandemic and economic collapse. To for now, simply let it all play out in the space of the mind, like weather patterns, and resting in an awareness that is capable of holding it all and not taking any of it quite so personally. Because in the end, we, we in the deepest of ways already know that it actually isn't personal. It may have huge consequences for us in our individual personal lives, but it is not personal. And part of our ability to navigate it really depends on our willingness to not take personally things that aren't personal and learn to tap deeply into this profound interior resource. Perhaps the most fundam fundamental aspect of our being human, awareness itself. and the wisdom and compassion and clarity and kindness and connectedness that it can um, offer us. Not simply as a refuge or protection or a place to stand for ourselves, but as a way to be in wise relationship with each other near and far and with the world, such as it is. And so if you're comfortable with it, just resting in the infinite boundless spaciousness of awareness And if you feel more comfortable, just connecting to some kind of anchor for your attention, then the breath and the sense of the body is all sitting here, couldn't be more valuable, more useful. And it turns out, guess what? It's the same awareness whether you're featuring a particular object of attention or whether you're simply resting in this open hearted presencing, this choiceless awareness, as Krishnamurti calls it. The boundless spaciousness that 
is the fundamental characteristic of human awareness. And it's fundamentally so much bigger <clears throat> than our personal self-centered, self-oriented narratives about who we are. So this silent wakefulness adds a whole other dimension to how we can be in wise and emotionally intelligent a relationship to the full catastrophe of the human condition, writ large and writ small right now in the world we're inhabiting today, this last day of March, 2020. And is it possible to taste that in this timeless moment, there is, there are huge degrees of freedom available to us? Not as because we're in some kind of privileged position, but by nature, by virtue of our being human. These are profound interior resources baked into our truest nature as a species. In fact, the name of our species, Homo sapiens sapiens, reflects just that. The species that is aware and is aware that it is aware. Can we take up residency here? Can we abide here? At least in this moment, with the lightest of touches, and at the same time knowing that our, our very life and in fact, in some sense, our species and the world, our world at least, depend, depends on it. And that we'll manifest that wisdom and that compassion each in our own ways, in our families, in our work, in our loves and in our calling and our longing. In a sense, in a sense, it's a, it's a symphony with all of us playing our parts. Right here on this uh, call, on this platform, on this, uh, in this Indra's net that we're all participating in. on purpose, having chosen to tune in right now. And there's wisdom in just that. That really should be acknowledged. And so can you feel that this uh, awareness and the deep silence that it embraces, is always present even while I'm talking, even while you're thinking, even during emotional turbulence in the mind and the body. And it can become, if we exercise this muscle or engage in this love affair,
it can become what the neuroscientists would call our default mode. Rather than defaulting to mind wandering and mindlessness and emotional reactivity that very often rules and dominates our lives and our life decisions. We default to wakefulness. In the, any moment that we do it, we're already liberated, already free, and already far, far larger than our narratives about who we are and what we're either, what our failings are, what our fears are, even what our aspirations are. Our true nature, just simply so much bigger than that already, so there's no place to go, nothing to do, and no special something to attain because you're already whole, already complete, and can meet the world out of this completeness in ways that is exactly what is called for. in the moment we find ourselves in now. So although I've rung some bells to signal the closing of uh, <clears throat> that particular meditation practice, in fact, and you all know this, there is no end to the meditation practice. Mindfulness would be useless if it was only about formal meditation. The beauty of it is that it's portable and it's available to us virtually 24 seven. And we most need it, of course, when the proverbial stuff is hitting the proverbial fan, which is happening for so many of us in this world, in so many different ways, in so many different countries, and at so many different levels of economic hardship or privilege. And we really do need uh, to tap into this beyond time and space dimension that's baked into our humanity to navigate the unfolding of the world we're in and the future we could possibly make for ourselves. <clears throat> 